hello everyone and thanks for watching edupedia world video this is the second video on the topic of relations and we'll continue where we left off last time so we looked at a particular type of relation last time r is equal to a comma b both of them belonging to the set of integers z comma z such that a minus b is even and we saw a few of its properties we saw that it was reflexive symmetric and transitive which means that it is an equivalence relation Now what are the elements of R if we were to explicitly write them down? There would be an infinite number of them. There would be like 2 comma 4, 3 comma 5, minus 1 comma 17, 4 comma 8, an infinite number of them obviously. But they have a peculiar property. Right. So if you look at Z, which is the set of all integers which is the set in which the relation R is defined remember the terminology we use a relation R in the set Z right so it can be broken up into two separate sets disjoint sets E and O E is the set of all even integers And O is the set of all odd integers. Right, so E would be minus 2, minus 4, 2, 4, 8 and so on. O would be the set of odd integers. And we're including obviously negative numbers among this as well. Now these two sets satisfy certain properties. The first property they satisfy is all elements of E... are related to each other if you take one even number and you take another even number obviously their difference is even so all elements of the set of even numbers are related to all elements of the set of even numbers and the same is true for odd You take any two elements in the set of odd integers, their difference is going to be even. Right. So all elements are related to one another and of E and all elements of O are related to one another. There's another property which is that no element of E is related to any element of O. and vice versa so you won't have any even element which when taken the difference with an odd element gives you any even number right so no element of e will be related to any element of o no element of o will ever be related to any element of e and the third property is a combination of two properties the first is e and o are disjoint well, the mathematical way of this would be the intersection of E and O is the empty set. Remember, the phi is the empty set. And this is the first part. And the second part is the union of E and O is Z. So basically, we broke up Z into two separate sets such that both those sets were disjoint. They had no intersection. And the union of those sets gave me Z, right? So if we combined these two sets, we would not miss a single element of Z. Every element would be accounted for, right? This wouldn't work, for example, if you had uh, the set of even integers and the set of, let's say, positive odd integers. They would both still be disjoint, but E union O would not give me Z in that case, right? Because it would... So Z is broken up into two such that their sum gives Z. So nothing is left outside. 
every member of Z is either a member of E or O, and no member of E is a member of O. Right. So these three relations are followed, and when these three relations are followed, then we have E and O being called equivalence classes. Right. So equivalence classes are basically sets into which uh, the big set in, in which R is defined is broken up. Now, they need to have these three properties for them to be considered equivalent classes. I'll generalize this in a minute, but E is considered the equivalence class containing 0 0 and it is often referred to as 0 with the square brackets. Similarly, O is the equivalence class containing 1 So it is often referred to as one in the square bracket. Now, if we right, we know basically which class we are referring to, right? Because no elements are common. So O can also be referred to as thirty-five in square brackets or minus seventeen in square brackets. Any of these would tell you that O equivalence class containing thirty-five, right? If it is the equivalence class containing thirty-five and there are only two equivalence classes you know which one of the two it is. If it is an equivalence class containing 0 or containing 2, then we know it is E. If it is an equivalence class containing minus 17, then we know it is O. Right. Also, one more thing. O is the same as 2R and 1, sorry, 0 is the same as 2R and 1 is the same as 2R plus 1 for any R. Meaning, O in square brackets is the equivalence class containing O. That is the equivalence class containing any even number. So if I said for example in square brackets 16, that would also be E, this equivalence class. Any equivalence class of the form of 2R plus 1 is the same as the equivalence class containing 1, which is the odd one. Right. So let's generalize this a little bit. So if you are given an arbitrary relation R in a set Z. Now this Z in this example is integers, but it could be any general thing. And also R has the property such that R divides Z into, actually, you know what, L let's just take X. Z automatically reminds you of integers. Let's just take a random set X, which could be Z, N, R, or any other set. So a relation R in a set X such that, this should be such that, better terminology, R divides X into mutually disjoint subject, subsets Now just keep in mind what we did in the previous slide and this is just a generalization of that. If R divide X into mutually disjoint subsets AI which are called partitions or divisions which satisfy three properties, which are the generalization of three properties we heard, then I'll just write the ending here. Then the subsets AI are called equivalence classes. Oh, oh, I forgot to mention one thing. Obviously, since we are talking about equivalent classes, this is an equivalence relation. 
So whatever we are talking about now, equivalence classes, they are only valid for equivalence relations. So if you have an equivalence relation R in a set X, means defined from the set X to the set X, such that R divides the set X into mutually disjoint subsets. Now this includes both the things. This includes that they are mutually disjoint and R divide X into that. So there will not be any element left over. Every element of X will be in one or another partition. And if they satisfy three properties, then AI are called equivalence uh, classes. What are the three properties? All elements of AI are related to each other. for all i. So if you divide x into four subsets, a1, a2, a3, and a4, all elements of a1 are related to each other, all elements of a2 are related to each other, and so on. Also, no element of ai is related to any element of aj if i is not equal to j. So no element of a1 is related to any element of a2, no element of a2 is related to any element of a3. Remember we are talking about relations, so equivalence class are defined by relations. Different relations on the same set might give different equivalence classes. And the third is ai intersection with aj is equal to phi for all i not equal to j. That means they don't have any elements in common. And a1 union a2 union dot dot dot. Basically the union of all of them which is also sometimes written as union aj is x. So they are mutually disjoint and the union of them gives the set x. So every element of x is divided into one of these. Then the subsets ai are called equivalence classes. Let's look at one more example of equivalence classes, which is somewhat similar to the example we've already seen, but it'll make things a little bit clearer. R is equal to A comma B, both belonging to Z comma Z, such that A minus B is a multiple of three. In the previous example, it was a multiple of two, so odd even, now it's a multiple of three. So let's look at first whether it's reflexive, symmetric, and transmitted, transitive to make sure it's an equivalence relation. A minus A is always a multiple of 3 because it's 0, so it is reflexive. If A minus B is a multiple of 3, B minus A is a multiple of 3 also. Of course, we're assuming, for example, that minus 9 is a multiple of 3. And if A minus B is a multiple of 3 and B minus C is a multiple of 3, then A minus C is a multiple of 3, which means it is an equivalence relation. Now you can already see that it is div div uh, divided into three subsets. Let's call them A1, A2, and A3. A1 is just the subset of numbers which are multiple of threes. Right, so it can be written as X as a member of Z such that X is equal to 3K. Right, for K is equal to 1, 2, or minus 1, or whatever. Right, so k is a member of integers. Right, so this will be basically uh, 0, 3, 6, 9, obviously minus 3, minus 6 and so on as well. This is one set. The other is x belonging to z such that x is equal to 3k plus 1 for k belonging to z. Which means that this will be 1, 4, 7, 10, and so on. Right, also minus 2, minus 5. And the third, now you can guess this one yourself, x is equal to 3k plus 2. 3k plus 3 will just give me 3k again because 3k plus 3 is also multiple of 3. For k belonging to z, which will be 2, 5, 8, 11, and so on. So we can see these three sets, if you take the union, you will get all integers because every integer falls into one of these three categories. Right, 
and no elements are common within these. Also, you can see that all elements of A1 are related to each other. You take 0 and you take um, uh, 18, 18 minus 0 will be a multiple of 3. So, all elements of A1 are related to each other, all elements of A2 are related to each other and all elements of A3 are related to each other. No element of A1 is related to any element of A2 because the difference will be 1, right? Or 3 alpha plus 1 if this is K1 and this is K2. And also, these three are mutually disjoint and when you take the union, you get the actual set of integers. So, we can say A1, A2 and A3 are equivalence classes. Again, they are equivalence classes with respect to this relation. Equivalence classes are defined on sets with respect to particular relations. If this was A minus B is a multiple of 2, we would have had two equivalence classes. Right. So, A1, A2 and A3 are equivalence classes. And obviously, the moment you say that the equivalence class containing 10, you automatically know that it's A2 because A2 is the only equivalence class containing 10. Right. So, often A1 will be just written as 3R, where R is an integer. A2 will often be written as 3R plus 1 and A3 will always be written as 3R plus 2. The square brackets just indicate that the A3 is an equivalence class containing elements of the form of 3R plus 2. We could have just said that it is in square brackets 8 then we would automatically know we are talking about A3 because A3 is the only one containing 8. Right. So, uh, this is uh, the complete uh, conceptualization of equivalence classes. You take a set, you put a relation in that set, that means from that set to that set, such that the set is divided into a number of mutually disjoint sets and obviously they follow those three properties. They are mutually disjoint and their union is Z. No elements of one are related to any element of another and all elements within an equivalence class are related to each other. In the next video, we start learning about functions. Thank you.